Hi, I'm Nick from Profi, and I'm here with Dr. Dave Davis uh, on farm here in Dumfries today, where we have been harvesting some whole crop beans for a trial, looking at uh, how good they are at replacing soya in the ration as a protein source. Dave's going to tell us a little bit about what we've done today and what the outcome hopefully will be. So today we've been doing a trial looking at different headers to see which is the most efficient at capturing the beans from the field into the whole crop. Uh, part of that was actually to do some field trial strips with three different headers yeah. and actually looking after that forage harvester had passed through with quadrats looking at actually doing bean counts. Uh, as simple as that, uh, replicated three strips for each uh, machine in the field so that we weren't focusing different machines in different areas to try and take away any variation across the field in terms of uh, the crop. And then just doing the bean count, those beans are then collected. We'll be weighing those to look at the total loss. We'll be actually doing some analysis on those collected beans for protein and starch, the main two reasons why we'd be growing beans. And once that uh, forage had been um, forage harvested, I've actually been making mini silos of that uh, in basically three litre kilner jars. Is that what you've got down there? That's it. absolutely. So when each trailer loads come in, I've collected a, a four kilo sample Two and a half kilos has been packed very tightly into here. So that's like a mini silo. That's clamp, a mini silo it? clamp. It's what's used experimentally as a um, model for the clamp silo. I can hear many farmers amazed that it's a model. It's a pretty good model for the central part of the clamp. And then we make sure we sheet um, the equivalent of sheeting, making sure we get a tight seal. That is then kept at a constant temperature of around 20 degrees C for three months, 90 days, to replicate what would happen in a silo with its seal. So what are the challenges of getting uh, the beans to actually uh, ferment and keep well in the clamp without too much spoilage? So beans, being a high protein crop, have a particular challenge in terms of the fermentation process. Because the high protein, whilst very beneficial in terms of what we're trying to do uh, for homegrown protein, actually challenge the fermentation because protein acts as a buffer to the pH decline. They're also relatively low in sugar, so you've got a limited sugar source to carry out that fermentation. So over the course of this work, we've actually looked at different additives to see how good that fermentation is. In all silages, there's a compromise between fermentation and aerobic stability. Beans, I would imagine, and the, the studies I've done so far show that they are relatively aerobically stable. So the fermentation is the key. So we're using a chemical additive today. There are a number of chemical additives on, on the market. This one has a good track record of controlling the anaerobic phase, so the yeah. fermentation phase, controlling the undesirable enterobacteria and clostridia in the main two, and the yeast and moulds, which are the main ones that feed out. And because we've got different headers, things going on there, we didn't want to complicate that by adding an additive treatment on top. I think it's about seven quid a tonne, the additive. So that seems quite, a, at, at four litres a tonne, that seems quite a high rate. There's challenges around that, you've got to have a special applicator. Um, is it worth doing? I think you hit on a very, very important point. We look at the additive cost uh, 170 a litre, adding four litres, mounts up very quickly. But we shouldn't be looking at the additive cost, we should be looking at the additive value. Yep. So you've got a high value crop here, uh, you want to look after it, that value pays for itself. You know, you, and I haven't done the calculation, but many farms have 25% dry matter losses from field to feed out. You, even if you only drop that to 15%, your quid's in on yeah. that cost of the additive. Yeah, so yeah. that's where we should be looking at additives. It's not about the cost, it's about the benefit yeah. and so the value. And the machines today that we've seen working in the field, um, what, what are the key attributes that you need to see in terms of processing those beans? Okay, one thing obviously is getting them in the front of the machine without too many losses, but once they're inside the machine, what are the key attributes you need to see? So first thing is making sure that you get it in without any extra soil contamination. So a clean pickup, making sure that you're actually cutting the stubble very cleanly and, and lifting that without lifting soil up. And then in terms of processing, that will depend on the dry matter of the crop. So today, 
we've seen the beans not processed too heavily. On a beef farm, that's absolutely fine. At the dry matter they are because we've had a challenging year. Yep. So that lower dry matter means that the beans don't have to be processed so much. If it was up at where it would like to have been, maybe 40, 45% dry matter, then we do need that bean absolutely smashed a bit. And so having the ability in the forage harvester to alter that processing, to change that depending on the dry matter is essential. Yeah. And we've won one forager today with a cracker and one without. So hopefully once the chemical analysis is done, we'll maybe actually see a difference there. Uh, See, or see whether it's worth it or whether there's any detriment in not running a cracker, I guess. So, in terms of my jars, most people will do NIR analysis. For a crop like beans, forget it because we haven't got the calibration. When you do the wet chemistry, they dry and grind the samples. So, looking at processing is irrelevant as well. So, the point you're looking at is, is the animal. Yeah. And the animal will tell you That's everything. That's what counts, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And to actually see whether you've processed them enough, you need to go sieving. I'll leave that to you. <laughs> <laughs> because that's where you're going to see them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Dave. That's, that's re been really interesting. Um, hopefully, we'll have some results in uh, early next year. Yep. It'll be really interesting to follow up with actually seeing what the results have, if there are any differences between the machines and between the, the various treatments. Yep.